Hi guys, Kieran Gedge here and welcome to my artistic journey and today I'll be taking you through probably the first hour of my current project which is the Butterfly Commando. Um, can't really tell you where, well actually Butterfly Commando actually was a piece of music I wrote years ago and uh, I put it together using Logic Pro or probably GarageBand, it was that long ago. And, uh, yeah, I listen to it every now and then, and it kind of conjured up images of butterflies fighting in a horrific war. And here we go. Um, I've found a skull. Now this picture that you can see uh, on the screen is actually a picture that I found on uh, unsplash.com, which is a uh, free stock photo website. Um, I can't tell you who the author of this picture is, but I will include it in the link below so that uh, they will get some credit for it. So, uh, yeah, I was talking about butterflies, wasn't I? Uh, so what does skulls have to do with butterflies? I think you'll find out as we go. Now, I have sped up this uh, film a little bit, which is why it's caught me a little bit off guard. I wasn't really expecting it to be this quick, but never mind. Um, okay, so I'm just going to position it on, on the page. Well, actually, I've already positioned it on the page. I'm talking um, almost two weeks now after I did this particular part of the drawing, but uh, what am I doing? Okay, I'm going to try and talk about what I'm doing because I want you to understand my process. Okay, by now, most of you who are familiar with my art will obviously have figured out that I am not what I would call an artist. I'm more of a tracer. I'm a person who gets uh, pictures, typically photographs, and I trace around them, which is exactly what I'm going to do with these skulls uh, shortly. Um, but first of all, I'm going to blow them up. Now, you would have seen that I used the modify tool and I just got out the particular skulls that I wanted. I'm using Adobe Animate, by the way, but I'm pretty sure you could do this on Photoshop. Now, instead of using the eraser tool to erase the edges out, I like to just draw around my objects. As you can see, I'm not doing a very good job of drawing straight. Um, not that this is exactly a straight line. It's more of an oval or a circle, but never mind. Uh, I'm going to draw around these skulls for a bit. And then I should, with any luck, be able to click on this little black arrow tool thing and cut off the top part there. Now, there's a couple of things I don't like about this already. As you can see, I don't, you know, I'm going to change the size of that skull there. And, oh, this guy's missing half his face. So what am I going to do about that? I know I'm going to select him, copy, and this is really cool, this part. Turn it around, and now I'm going to join this half with the original half and now I have a really creepy looking skull and if this actually belonged to a real human being this particular skull they would be pretty freaky and especially if I do that but never mind okay now hopefully my audience in the future like the people who look at the final product won't be so keen-eyed that they'll notice that this is the skull of a incredibly deformed human being all they will see is the main event, which is going to be happening in the center of this picture. Here we go. Yes, I'm going to get rid of this red line. And now I have the uh, carefully selected group of human skulls. But hang on, this guy over here has a bit of straightness to his skull. I don't like that. I'm going to fix it. How am I going to fix it? I'm going to draw around it like this and completely mess it up. No, I'm going to start again. Hold on, I'm going to draw from here. This time I'm going to start from the top. And I'm going to pretend that this guy has a slightly narrower face. And I'm going to cut off half his face, just like that. And no one is going to notice. So now I have four dead human beings. Well, at least the heads of them. I'll just move them into the middle of the page here. And uh, that's pretty good, if I don't say my, so myself. I'm not sure about that guy who's second from the left. It looks like half his face got taken out with an axe. Oh, who's this lovely person? This is me. 
well, actually, I probably shouldn't have told you straight off the bat. This is me. I'm in a part of the South Island there in New Zealand, standing on a large limestone rock at a place called Castle Hill. I'm sticking my chest out and sticking, well, sucking my stomach in. And I'm looking uh, meaningfully in the distance. And whoop, it's gone. Now, bring it back. Come on. I think at this part in the drawing, I oh know, here we go, I brought it back. Now, now, ah, look, now imagine that this man, this sexy piece of me, is standing on top of that skeleton. Let's just uh, fiddle with it a bit. Now, obviously, we don't want all this background stuff. Now, when I first started out on this I had this idea in my head that this particular picture had way more definition than it did and I for the life of me I could only find this particular photo on my brother's Facebook in fact I think it might have been a picture that he took with his camera it became my profile picture and therefore the picture is very small and as you can see it's incredibly granulated and there is hardly any definition and I searched and I searched and I searched and I could not find the original large version of this photo. So we're just going to have to make do with what I've got. And again, I'm not going to use the eraser tool. Whenever I use the eraser tool, I find that I don't very rarely do a good job. So I'm just going to draw around and cut out the background until we are left with an incredibly... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Handsome specimen of human manliness standing on what will be the remains of my fallen victims. But uh, let's uh, come back to that later. So while we're watching this incredibly boring part of me <laughs> butchering my surroundings... Uh, just talk a little bit about my background with art. I'm not really much of an artist. I always wanted to be. Unfortunately, uh, whenever I put pen to paper, I can just do little squiggles and cartoons. Uh, but I've never really been able to draw anything particularly realistic. And it wasn't really until I started using Adobe Animate to... Um, make my harmonica tutorials that I started uh, developing new techniques or rather discovering techniques. I'm not going to pretend that I invented the technique that you're watching, uh, but I certainly came to it by myself. I didn't learn this by watching other artists. I just figured out over time that you can actually trace over things, uh, pictures of things by using layers. So you create one layer, and uh, if you look at the top of the screen, you'll see that the picture, uh, sorry, the picture is a layer three. So if you were to put the picture there and then use the layer on top of that to uh, trace over it, you can then uh, zoom in and trace over it again, and then you zoom in and trace over it again until you end up with what I guess would be a very intricate stencil of the thing that you've drawn. And then you zoom in even further and begin to fill in the colors that you would see within that stencil. And uh, that's how, if you've been watching my channel for a while now, you'll see that in the early videos, all of my pictures, my fingers, a lot of people have commented on my creepy drawn fingers, uh, they are very, what's the word, uh, creepy. Uh, but as time went on, my pictures actually, oh, sorry, just checking that the audio is still recording. My pictures actually got quite realistic. My harmonica and my other instruments now, um, I wouldn't say they look almost like, like photographs, but they are way better than the original pictures. In fact, I have actually managed to, to use this method to draw some incredibly realistic pictures. Uh, but in the end, what's the point? If they look realistic, you might as well use a photo. I wanted to have a kind of effect that said, hey, I drew this and 
even though I traced it, it's still a nice feeling at the end of the day, and people still think you're cool when they see it. So anyway, here I am. I'm now floating in nothing. I guess it's the void. Oh, oh, hold on. The magic arrow has carefully placed me on top of this munted human skull, which is rather exciting. So basically, you got the impression that this dude... Oh, what's this? Well, this dude has just conquered these guys, but whoa, oh my goodness, it is a giant butterfly. Now again, this is a picture that I got off Unsplash, which is uh, the free photo stock photo site. Uh, in fact, I actually upload photos there myself whenever I go on holiday. I take a bunch of photos and... Again, I'm using the modify tool to um, turn this picture into something that I can... Why did I just cut that butterfly's butt off? No, no, that's right. It's the wings that I want. That's right. I'm not really interested in the butterfly part. I just want the wings. Now, originally, I went to Unsplash. Now, this is the problem with Unsplash. You can't always find exactly what you're looking for. I guess a lot of the more serious photographers are going to sites where they can uh, charge people for the use of their stuff and beggars can't be choosers, so I'm just going to go have to go with the wings that I find. I wanted a monarch butterfly. Monarch butterflies are very um, common here in New Zealand, but uh, and I guess you know they mean a lot to me because I've um, kept swan plants in the past and had um, many chrysalises hatch on my balcony, but um, not with this drawing. So I decided to, in the end, go for the wings that were at the very least um, angled the right way so that when you see what I'm about to do with them, this will all make a lot more sense. I have no idea what I'm doing in this part of the video. It is a bit silly. Um, but there we go. I guess, yeah, again, I don't use the erase tool because it just looks terrible when I do. That's funny, when you zoom into a lot of these pictures, you will see that they lose a lot of their definition, but it doesn't matter when you zoom back out. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought now. Now, I haven't scripted this video. I'm just talking as we go, so... Um, it will get a bit awkward at times. This is one of those awkward moments where I have no idea what to say next. Because this particular part of the drawing process is quite boring, I am still just trying to cut these damn wings out. And it is very late at night. It's nearly midnight and my children are in bed and my wife is asleep and I'm in the living room talking to myself. Um, if this was live, at least I would have the illusion of actual people that I could talk to, even if I don't know them. But no, I'm just going to pretend that this is like a live stream, even though there are no real people watching. Now, this wing is actually quite funny, because I noticed it has this funny knobbly bit on the end, which I'm going around now. It's kind of cool, but I would love to know what the actual function is of that part of the butterfly's wing. And I think... I will never find out because by the time I finish cutting this out and moving on to the next part, Bye Bye Flowers, I will have forgotten what I was talking about. And uh, true to my word, I can't remember what I was actually talking about at all. Now, it appears I have deleted the wings. Now, why would I do that after spending such an inordinate amount of time cutting them out? Oh, that's right. I'm going to paste them there. And now we are going to zoom back in. And I'm going to carefully place these wings onto my human back. And voila, just like that, I am not just a little man standing on the head of a dead person. I am a butterfly commando ready to... To conquer the world as I have already conquered these skulls. This part was incredibly boring so I sped it up so you didn't have to watch it. I think this part of the video actually like in real life seriously took something like 29 minutes just cutting out this stupid sword 
And I have to say, it's not a stupid sword. I found this on Unsplash again. And as you can see, it's very jagged. It's very scary looking. And I would say that it does not actually represent a sword that was ever used by any actual human being, but probably from some creature in another dimension that came here with the intention of making a human shish kebab. But I don't think it was very successful. So it ended up being photographed by some person on Unsplash. Again, I don't know who that person was because I forgot to get their name before I started talking to this microphone. But if you look in the description below, I'm hoping that I would have been diligent enough to include the link to their Unsplash profile. And just like that... With a little bit of TV magic, we have finished cutting out the sword. We're shrinking it down. And I think originally I wanted to give the butterfly a gun, but I couldn't find any real guns. And I thought, well, a sword is kind of cooler. So now that sword is still way too big. So we're going to bring it down a little bit more. Now you notice I was talking about the definition of the photograph of me a little bit earlier doesn't really matter when you zoom back out it actually looks okay it's it's only when you zoom in that you start to notice now I don't really like the way I'm holding the sword I am actually right-handed and so it does make sense from my personal experience that I would be holding it in that hand but there's something kind of like it almost looks like I'm trying to take a pee with the sword, and that's not exactly the effect I'm trying to go for. So hopefully me from two weeks ago is going to figure that out in a minute and move it. What am I doing? Oh, yeah, that's right. I wanted to put this part of the sword behind my pants, but it just still looks a bit f funny and... I mean, look at my hand. You can't even see the def definition of my fingers. Uh, the person, I mean, the people looking at this painting, they're meant to believe somehow that uh, I'm actually holding that sword with my magic butterfly powers. But no, I know. I've got an idea. Why don't I move the sword and put it in the other hand? Are you going to do that for me? Are you going to move it into the other hand? Come on past me do it hurry because that just looks stupid now i've got a feeling that i'm going to take my time anyway i can kind of sense that i'm coming to the end of this video and i have no idea what i've been waffling on about but um i would like you if you've come this far to consider watching the next video because in the next video i'm going to begin the tracing process so this is just the setting up of the original material. This is the part where I um, basically put all the elements of the picture together. But my next goal is to create the stencil that I'm going to fill in with the color so that it will end up looking more like a portrait of the butterfly commando. Um, and eventually I will add a background and when I'm finished with all that, I'm going to make a time lapse so that I can turn the 30 odd hours that I've spent drawing this picture uh, into maybe 10 minutes of footage with some cool music. I might even put the actual Butterfly Commando music in the background. Now that's just the second stage. The third stage is going to be me actually attempting to paint this. Now I said before I am not a painter, I'm not a drawer, but I've figured, I've kind of reasoned that I can use the same, 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 the same stencil process that I've uh, figured out digitally that I might be able to transfer the same stencil that I'm going to create onto a canvas, which I will then attempt to paint. And that would actually be quite a feat. Now, I don't even know at this point if that's possible or if I'm going to succeed. But as you can see, I'm holding the sword properly. I'm standing on the vanquished skull of some poor human victim. And uh, I'm going to save it because that's all I've got time for today. So tune in next time, and hey, don't forget, you can join this group of mine on 
Facebook if you would like to meet other YouTubers. So thanks for watching, and until next time, stay tuned.